Tov is the reigning heavyweight champion of the world. From Little Rock, Arkansas, USA, this man is six feet three and 120 kilograms of anim. I'm Marvin Palmer, I'm from Bournemouth in the UK and um, I'm British National Super Heavyweight Champion and I'm here to pull Monster Michael Todd, the Armour's Heavyweight World Champion. This is a man that's got nothing to lose. You know, he beats me and his stock rises really fast. Everyone's going to write me off, they're going to think, well, Todd's going to go straight through me, but I got into this game to, have, to pull the biggest monsters and I don't scare easily, it doesn't bother me, so I'm just going to have it with him and see what happens. He is in the guys in the driver's seat, basically. He wins today, and it's huge. Mike Todd is probably the best defensive heavyweight in the world that I've seen. Um, if I can get him across my side of the table, then we'll see how good he can defend when I'm trying to rip his arm, arm off. I don't want to get caught up in a match where, you know, I'm taking him lightly, he jumps on me, I have to come back from a crazy position and lose. I mean, I know I've made a career out of coming back from ridiculous positions, but I'm trying to be a little smarter. Marvin Palmer, the man from Bournemouth, England, has an opportunity for greatness standing before him. And the man in the grey shirt is a towering spectacle. And this guy is a beast. Monster Michael Todd claims to be one of the most powerful arm wrestlers in the world. And after his performance at Arm Wars Acid Rain in Manchester, England against No Limits Devon Larratt, who could argue that? Todd Go is incredibly in. powerful. Look at the speed from Palmer out of the blocks there. Marvin was ridiculously quick using that long lever. One important point to make about this is that Marvin does have a leverage advantage over the American. Few people will have better levers than the Englishman. 6-5, very, very long range opponent. He's starting at the back of the pad and he exposes the hand of Todd. But Michael Todd doesn't worry about that too much, and particularly when strapped to his opponent. Because he can channel the arm power from the most unusual of positions. And he looks to the crowd. In the mind of the monster, the match is already over. He now will start to try and bleed out Palmer. Palmer trying to copy the lead of Devon Larratt, but it's easier said than done. The man from Bournemouth, England, has just learned that the hard way. You'll see Palmer concentrating his focus on the hand and the fingers of Monster Michael Troll, trying to walk his way up. Todd with the press on nil USA. The first match, really, I was just want to take a little out and take a little steam off of him. So I held him for a little bit, you know. Um, strong guy, strong guy. Well, in Germany, leading by one pin, Nosferatu, Dan Thomas. Trying to give a little advice to the field. Marvin Palmer won't be too disappointed with that start. As Michael Todd said in his pre match interviews, he felt he had nothing to lose coming into this match, and I would agree with that. So powerful in the hand and wrist, such a weapon to have that line by bicep strength. About two inches below Go. its maximum or above its maximum extension, Todd's bicep is just something special. Now, look at him waiting out. That's a great shot of the technique of Michael Todd. Now, look at the arm. People have accused Todd of having a bone lock. As you can see there, it is not a bone lock. He's about two inches above the lock position and he's using the bicep tendon strength at its fullest extension with a tremendous amount of rotation oh and there's the transition that transition's furious speed there drove straight through the arm of the englishman look at that on the replay he creates a situation where marvin started to play the game of height and levers and then as soon as he was drawn in like a fish dick in the bait, Michael transitioned and smashed it to the back. All I gotta do is tie him up, put that press on him, baby.
Michael Chalk with that. The longer the matches go, the stronger I get. We'll start showboating here a little bit. Josh the Animal Wood. Working on the arm. His stepfather in the corner. Marvin trying to get away early there. Speed is a weapon and Marvin will want to utilise that. I don't think that endurance is going to be a problem for Palmer. This man is an athlete. Now he gains control, but he's on the running foul. Enormous hit from Palmer off the start. And then on the replay, there's the bump. Elbow up in the air. Gains hand control, but as he goes to press, what's the elbow? That's the front and side. Michael go. Oh, it's been given. Looking at that on the replay. That, to me, is a dubious decision. Michael Todd gets the win. I actually do have to disagree with that. I don't think that was a pin. You win some, you lose some. Marvin Palmer not happy with that decision there. Went over to speak to Keith Taylor and say... Taking those glasses off, mate, but Keith Taylor is an excellent referee, very experienced. And he's reliant on the video call. Tricky one to call. The wing goes to Michael Top. And the monster is taking over. He calls now. He cannot lose this arm wrestling match. Palmer carves in. Starts to try and utilize a different technique. He tucks that elbow under. All this is around trying to target the hand and wrist control. And a big bump to the back. But he's unable to get separation. And as we saw from Barry Achore in the first part of the show, the same can be said about this powerful American. Separating his wrist from his shoulder is now impossible. Look at the maintenance of the angle on Michael Todd there. Very, very powerful bicep tendon strength. And again, Palmer goes on the run. And there's the transition. There's the press. And there's the victory from Monster Michael Toss. Look at that rising elbow foul from Palmer. He's went on to the running foul, but it was absolutely immaterial. Just a pressing power, the transitional pressing power of Monster Michael Toss. a little harder than what I expected. It's crazy. I'm a little disappointed with that match. I'll try to bring a little something different this time. You would have to say, Todd in good spirits. Between rounds. He's making Marvin Palmer sweat. But All right. Palmer has a lot to take away from this. He should be proud. He is performing so well at the elite level of heavyweight competition. If people have asked the question of Marvin, just how good is this man? Well, I think those questions have been answered tenfold today. Palmer is able to mix it up. Big hit again, and he gains head control. <laughs> Frustration for Todd, couldn't keep hold of Palmer. I think that will be Marvin's plan, but the downside of that plan is when you slip, they strap you to this individual. Not a nice experience. Monster Michael Todd is a horrible, horrible experience in a strap. This guy is so powerful. His arm strength is off the charts. Now that is a good position for Marvin Palmer. He's taken up his position at the back of the pad. He has to watch that he's not drawn into this height battle because the transitional press of Todd can come from really unusual angles. Todd. Whoa, that's Woo! just insane Give dragging you strength. Love, baby. See, so that is just a slingshot. Watch this. He will allow the back pressure. Now he lets Marvin close up his lap. What's his lap track? Bang! To the back of the pad. Just completely able to separate Marvin Palmer's bicep at will. So powerful. Yeah. A slingshot lap drag attack. Monster Michael Todd. <laughs> be the prettiest, most orthodox style in the world, but it is unarguable that Michael Todd's techniques are effective. Go you sit with uh, Marvin Palmer tonight, I'm sure he'll tell you all about it. He's got hand control, but he's not going to hang on to that arm. Todd slips, gets to the strap. They're saying that the strap favours the power man. It's going to be Michael Todd all day. Marvin Palmer sets the car. Will try to gain position. 
Oh, got the front of the paddle. We're looking for the lap drag. There it is. Unable to finish. This is better from Marvin Palmer, and he's not lost hand control. Now, Palmer will go on the car. Tries to gain control. Michael needs to watch that elbow. He uh, almost lap dragged himself off the back of the pad there. He is on the running pad. He was off the back of the pad. But intentional, I'm sure. Sometimes difficult when you're sweating as heavily as the American is to feel that. Now that won't count because he's on the runner and he knows it. Heath Taylor signalled low. Once the Michael Todd experienced enough to know that he's on the running foul. Sweating profusely under the lights. You can see his grey shirt starting to spot up with the sweat. There's the big... Oh, it's the elbow. It's the second elbow foul. Monster Michael Todd with a second elbow. Watch this on the replay. There was the lap drag. He may have got the pin, but it's an elbow. Actually, didn't get the pin. Credit to Marvin Palmer. Second elbow foul on the Englishman by default for pride. If I win the first one, I'm pretty much going to win all six. Dude, I lost the last match on fouls. Those lights were too hot. I was sweating. I couldn't tell I was fouling, man. It sucked. So that, I'm disappointed with that. <laughs> but all in all, good day, man. Had a good day. Of the day in Essen. Michael Todd with the victory as anticipated.